Assalamu alaikum everyone today we are going to discuss paper 1 of o level biology 5090 the year is october november 2017 variant 1 let's start mcq number 1 the diagram shows cells in the epidermis of a leaf so guys we have two cells in the epidermis of the leaf the cell p over here is the epidermal cell and the cell q over here is the guard cell okay to complete the diagram which structural features should be added to the cells p and q okay so some of the structural features are missing from cell P and cell Q and we have to add up these cell structures or structural features. Okay, so if we talk about epidermal cell, epidermal cells do not have chloroplasts. So we do, we do not need to place the chloroplast in cell P to complete the diagram. We won't be placing chloroplast to complete the diagram of epidermal cells because epidermal cells do not contain chloroplasts. However, we can see that in this cell there is no nucleus right now. So to complete the diagram, we need to place the nucleus in cell P. So we will place the nucleus in cell P. If we talk about cell Q, so guard cells do contain chloroplasts and to complete the diagram, we need to place the chloroplasts. But obviously nucleus is, also, nucleus is already present in the guard cells over here in the diagram so we do not need to place the nucleus to complete the diagram the answer is c let's move on to mcq number two which movement of a substance in plants is an energy consuming process so in this mcq the examiner is asking you about the movement of substances in plants that consumes energy from respiration always remember one point that the uptake of mineral ions by the root hair cells or the uptake of nitrate ions by the root hair cells is done by active transport and active transport is an energy consuming process. So the answer is C. Absorption of carbon dioxide by palisade cells occurs by diffusion. Diffusion does not require energy from respiration. Loss of water into the air spaces of a leaf is due to evaporation and evaporation is due to the heat energy evaporation does not require any energy from respiration transport of water up the xylem vessels is also passive transport of water up the xylem vessels is due to transpiration and transpirational pull it does not require energy from respiration let's move on to mcq number three the diagram shows the direction of water movement from one cell to another in a plant root. So we can see that water is moving from cell P to cell Q. Which cell has the higher water potential and how does the water move? Okay guys, so because water is moving from cell P to cell Q, it means cell P has a higher water potential because water always flows from a higher water potential to lower water potential cell p will be having a higher water potential cell q has the lower water potential that's why water is moving from cell p to cell q so while the water is moving the water is crossing the cell surface membranes which are partially permeable membranes and always remember this thing that whenever water crosses partially permeable membrane water is flowing by osmosis but whenever water is crossing the cell wall water is basically diffusing because for osmosis partially permeable membrane is required Right. So over here, we can see that the water is crossing the cell membranes and cell walls. So when the water is crossing the cell membrane, that is osmosis. And whenever the water is crossing the cell wall, that is diffusion. So over here, water is flowing by diffusion and osmosis. Water never flows by active transport. The answer is B. Let's move on to MCQ number four. According to the lock and key hypothesis, what is the lock and what is the key for the enzyme lipase? Guys, always remember that if we talk about lock and key hypothesis, so always remember that enzyme is the lock and substrate is the key. So if we talk about lipase, lipase is the enzyme 
So lipase will be the log. And the substrate for the lipase is lipids. Lipase breaks down lipids. So lipids is the substrate and it will be key. The answer is D. MCQ number five. Which characteristic is the result of deficiency of magnesium ions in plants? So guys, as you all know, magnesium ions are required to make chlorophyll. And when there is magnesium ion deficiency, there is chlorophyll deficiency. And when there is chlorophyll deficiency, leaf turns yellow because leaf is green due to chlorophyll. And whenever, whenever there is less chlorophyll or whenever there is chlorophyll deficiency, so leaves turn yellow or we can say that leaves will have yellow spots. So there will be yellow areas between the leaf veins. The answer is D. Let's move on to MCQ number six. When is carbon dioxide absorbed and when is it released? by an ecosystem such as tropical rainforest so guys tropical rainforest in tropical rainforest there are trees so uh, carbon dioxide is absorbed for photosynthesis during the daylight and carbon dioxide is released during the darkness when the plants only respire and not photosynthesize the answer is c mcq number seven what describes the upper cuticle of a leaf so guys, if we talk about waxy cuticle, so waxy cuticle is a layer which is made up of a waxy substance called cutin, right? So this layer is a waxy layer, which is a transparent layer. It is a waterproof layer. It is non-cellular. So what you need to know about the waxy cuticle, waxy cuticle layer is a very thin layer. It's non-cellular. It does not contain any cells. It's waterproof. It's transparent. It prevents excessive loss of water by evaporation and transpiration. So what is upper cuticle? It's a permeable layer. No, it's an impermeable layer. It's waterproof. It's a single layer of cells. It is not made up of cells, guys. So B could not be the answer. It is a single layer of transparent cells. Again, it is not made up of cells. It is a thin non cellular layer preventing water loss from the leaf. So D is the answer. Let's move on to MCQ number eight, which is essential for the healthy growth of teeth in a baby. So guys, for healthy growth of teeth and bones, you need calcium and vitamin D. So the answer is A. Let's move on to MCQ number nine. The diagram shows part of the elementary canal and associated organs. Which part would contain highest concentrations of glucose and amino acids four hours after eating a meal? So guys, uh, when we consume a meal, what happens? The meal is first digested and then absorbed into the blood. So the blood vessel which carries the nutrient rich blood is the hepatic portal vein which carries the nutrient rich blood to the liver. So whenever we consume a meal the food is absorbed from the small intestine into a blood vessel known as the hepatic portal vein which is D and this blood vessel which is the hepatic portal vein contains the highest concentration of glucose and amino acids four hours after consuming a meal. So the answer is D. Let's move on to MCQ number 10. After eating, the pH in the mouth decreases. Which statement explains this decrease? So guys, when we eat, what happens? We usually eat sugars and what happens is that a layer of sugar forms over the teeth and the gums and the bacteria in the mouth then respire anaerobically on these sugars forming lactic acid. So what happens that when, when we consume meal, so our meal contains sugars such as glucose. So the mouth bacteria, what they do? They respire anaerobically on the sugars or glucose producing lactic acid. So glucose is broken down into lactic acid and this lactic acid causes the pH of the mouth to decrease. So bacteria release acids is the answer 10A. MCQ number 11, which conditions result in the highest rate of transpiration from a plant? So guys, you should know that lower the humidity, higher the rate of transpiration and higher the temperature, higher the rate of transpiration. So answer would be B because at a humidity of 60, which is low and a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, which is higher rate of transpiration would be highest in a plant. MCQ number 12. The diagram shows a cut plant shoot in a container of water. What will stop the movement of water up this stem? A fall in the humidity of the air 
always remember this point guys when the humidity falls what happens the rate of transpiration increases and even more water is traveled up the xylem in the stem so higher the rate of transpiration higher will be the rate of uptake always remember this point so if there's a fall in the humidity more transpiration will occur there will be higher rate of transpiration and more water uptake will occur the water uptake will not stop a rise in the air temperature again as the temperature rises the rate of transpiration increases and more water is taken up air bubbles in the xylem this is the true this is true and the answer is c because if there is any air bubble in the xylem this air bubble will block the xylem vessel and will prevent the water traveling up the xylem so the movement of the water will only be stopped by the air bubbles in the xylem and insect sucking the sugars from the phloem has no effect on the water movement because the insect is sucking the sugar from the phloem and not from the xylem the water travels in the xylem vessels so d cannot be the answer the answer is c let's move on to mcq number 13 the graph shows the changes in the blood pressure in the left ventricle of the heart during which period is the left atrium contracting so guys always remember this point that when the left atrium contracts the blood is squeezed into the left ventricle always remember this point whenever left atrium contracts the blood is squeezed into the left ventricle and over here the graph is of the pressure in left ventricle so what will happen when the left atrium contracts the blood is pushed into the left ventricle and what will happen there will be a mild increase in pressure so where so left atrium is contracting at a squeezing or pushing the blood into the left ventricle and there is a mild increase in the pressure of the left ventricle the phase b shows contraction of left ventricle so at b left ventricle contracts because there is a very large increase in the blood pressure of the left ventricle when left ventricle contracts guys always remember this point whenever left ventricle contracts there will be a very high rise or there will be a very great rise in the blood pressure of the left ventricle when the left ventricle contracts during c and d what happens there is relaxation of left ventricle so left ventricle relaxes left ventricle relaxes as a result there is a fall in the blood pressure of the left ventricle so always remember this point this is the graph of the blood pressure changes in the left ventricle whenever the left atrium contracts blood is squeezed into the left ventricle and because of uh, the squeeze of blood or push of blood into the left ventricle there's a mild increase in the pressure so the answer will be a at b there's a very large increase in the pressure of the left ventricle because the left ventricle is contracting itself and c and d phases represent the relaxation of left ventricle because the pressure of the left ventricle falls let's move on to mcq number 14 what are the effects of following activity on pulse rate when compared to the resting pulse rate okay so guys when the person is resting the person has a low or a, a person has a low heart rate or pulse rate always remember this point when we are resting we have a comparatively lower or normal heart rate or pulse rate but when we start walking even if we are walking slowly there's a mild increase in the pulse rate or heart rate and if we start running again there is an increase in pulse rate or heart rate so the answer will be d let's move on to mcq number 15 the diagram shows capillaries with the direction of movement of materials okay what is happening at points one and two so guys let's uh, we are observing that at one substances are coming out of the blood into the tissues so which substances come out of the blood into the tissues let's see carbon dioxide leaves the blood no carbon dioxide never leaves the blood carbon dioxide enters the blood from the tissues oxygen diffuses yes oxygen can diffuse from the blood to the tissues tissue fluid leaving the capillaries yes 
Tissue fluid can also leave the capillary at one. Red blood cells move into the tissues. Guys, red blood cells never leave the blood. Okay, so the options could be B and C. Let's look at two. Two represents the movement of substances into the blood. Okay, so urea enters the blood. This could be right. Um, red blood cells return to the blood. No, this cannot be the right. Cannot be right because red blood cells never leave the blood. So, if the red blood cells do not leave the blood, they will not also return to the blood. Waste products enter the blood. This is true. At two, waste products are entering into the blood. So the answer is C. Let's move on to MCQ number sixteen. Anaerobic respiration takes place when there is a lack of which substance? Always remember this point whenever there is lack of oxygen. Anaerobic respiration takes place. MCQ number seventeen. Okay, um, so why, when there is a lack of oxygen, anaerobic respiration occurs? Because anaerobic respiration is a type of respiration which occurs in the in the absence of oxygen. Anaerobic respiration involves the breakdown of glucose in the absence of oxygen. Which structure is lined with cilia? Okay, so guys, always remember that. Trachea is an organ that is lined by cilia, and bronchus is lined by cilia. OV duct or fallopian tube is lined by cilia. So, guys, these three structures are lined by cilia. Over here, the answer is B, bronchus. Let's move on to MCQ number eighteen. Which row shows the state of muscles when the when breathing out? as deeply as possible so guys we are breathing out as deeply as possible whenever we breathe out what happens whenever whenever we breathe out as you all know that whenever you breathe out your rib cage moves internally it moves inwards and downwards whenever you breathe out your rib cage moves internally it moves inwards and downwards so always remember this point because when you are breathing out your rib cage is moving internally so for that internal intercostal muscles contract and obviously when internal intercostal muscles contract the external intercostal muscles are relaxed because these are antagonistic muscles so when one contracts the other relaxes and you should know that whenever you breathe out diaphragm relaxes when we breathe in diaphragm contracts and when we breathe out diaphragm relaxes so the answer is d let's move on to mcq number 19 men sometimes develop an enlarged prostate gland how might this affect urination so guys if you memorize this is the bladder and at the base of the bladder there is a gland known as the this is a bladder and at the base of the bladder there is a gland known as the prostate gland and from the bladder what comes out from the bladder what comes out the urethra so if prostate gland enlarges what will happen if prostate gland enlarges what will happen? It will compress the urethra. So whenever prostate gland enlarges, it pushes on the urethra and compresses the urethra. So what will happen? This will block the urethra or we can say this will prevent the exit of urine from the bladder. The answer is B. Because the urethra will be compressed so this will slow down or prevent the exit of urine from the bladder into the urethra the answer is b by blocking the ureter uh, prostate gland enlargement will not block the ureter ureter is a tube which brings urine from the kidney to the bladder by stopping the bladder filling with the urine bladder will still fill with urine by stopping urine production by the kidneys urine still urine will still be produced only the urethra is affected and the exit of urine from the bladder is affected. Okay, let's move on to MCQ number 20. What helps 
heat retention in the human body guys what is meant by heat retention when heat stays within the body it is known as heat retention retention means keeping something right so um which of the following helps heat retention in the body actively secreting sweat glands no if sweat glands are actively secreting the sweat more heat will be lost and there will be less heat retention dilated blood vessels near the skin surface if the blood vessels are dilated near the skin surface more blood flows near to the skin surface and more heat will be lost by radiation so heat more heat will be lost and there will be less heat retention fat in and under the skin this is the answer because as you all know that fat is the heat insulator fat minimizes the heat losses and allows heat retention the answer is c let's move on to mcq number 21 the diagram shows the brain in vertical section which part is hypothalamus so you guys should know that the this flap like structure is known as the hypothalamus so guys at the base of the hypothalamus we have this uh, p shaped gland which is known as pituitary gland so d is the pituitary gland so always remember that whenever you see a pituitary gland just above the pituitary gland there is a flap like structure known as the hypothalamus okay b over here is the cerebellum and c is the spinal cord okay let's move on to mcq number 22 which statement describes the pupil reflex in bright light so guys always remember this point for bright light for pupil reflex in bright light what you should remember is the rule of 36 so pupil reflex in bright light for pupil reflex in bright light you should remember the rule of 3 c's whenever there is bright light the pupil constrict so there is constriction of pupil in bright light and for the constriction of pupil what happens circular muscles contract circular muscles c for circular muscles c for contract c for constriction that's why rule of 3 c's and whenever circular muscles contract the radial muscles relax so what will happen the circular muscles will contract the radial muscles will relax and the pupil constricts so the answer is 3 7 and 10 the answer is c let's move on to mcq number 23 where are receptors found so guys always remember that receptors are found at one end of the sensory neuron because sensory neuron picks up the electrical impulse from the receptor receptor detects the stimulus so receptors are not found along the length of all the neurons they are not found at the ends of the radial neuron they are not found at one end of the motor neuron they are only found at one end of the sensory neurons you should know that at one end of the motor neuron there is effector so mcq could be like this as well that where are effectors found the answer would be at one end of the motor neuron okay let's move on to mcq number 24 which structure does not have its muscles which structure does not have its muscles arranged antagonistically okay so guys the answer is the heart ventricle if we talk about the heart ventricle the bo both the right ventricle and the left ventricle they contract together and relax together it's not like that that when the right ventricle is contracting the left ventricle is relaxing and when the left ventricle is contracting right ventricle is relaxing both the ventricles contract together and relax together so this is not these are not antagonistic muscles but if we talk about iris of the eye there are two muscles in the iris of the eye which control the size of the pupil these are the circular muscles and the radial muscles whenever circular muscles contract the radial muscles relax and when the radial muscles contract circular muscles relax so these are antag the, the iris contains antagonistic muscles the esophagus valves also contain antagonistic muscles which are circular muscles and longitudinal muscles whenever circular muscles contract longitudinal muscles relax whenever circular muscles relax longitudinal muscles contract and in the upper arms we have the bicep and tricep so when the bicep contracts the tricep relaxes when the tricep contracts bicep relaxes so 
The heart ventricle is the only option in which the muscles are not arranged antagonistically. However, in IRS, in the walls of the esophagus and in the upper arm, the muscles are arranged antagonistically. Antagonistic muscles are a pair of muscles. There are two muscles which have opposite actions. MCQ number 25. When a mother smokes during pregnancy, the oxygen supply to the fetus is reduced. Which row shows how the components of tobacco smoke causes this? So guys, as you all know, if a female smokes during pregnancy, what happens is that less oxygen is delivered to the fetus. There are two causes of this. The cigarette smoke contains carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide binds to hemoglobin very tightly, and this prevents the binding of oxygen. So as a result, hemoglobin carries less oxygen to the fetus. So carbon monoxide combines with hemoglobin. Another reason for decreased oxygen delivery to the fetus is that the blood vessels that carry blood to the fetus, these blood vessels are found in the umbilical cord and these blood vessels constrict. Nicotine causes the constriction of blood vessels in the umbilical cord. So the answer is A. MCQ number 26. How do bacteria change milk into yogurt? So guys, remember that the bacteria convert lactose in milk, which is the milk sugar, to lactic acid. The bacteria respire anaerobically on lactose, converting it into lactic acid. This is how bacteria convert milk to yogurt. Because for the conversion of, conversion of milk to yogurt, lactic acid is required because lactic acid will denature the milk proteins and the milk will coagulate or curdle, forming a yogurt. So bacteria change the milk into yogurt by producing lactic acid. The answer is C. MCQ number 27, two containers X and Y were filled with equal amounts of dough mixture for making bread. The mixture in Y had yeast in it. The containers were left in a warm place for two hours. The diagram shows their appearance after this time. Okay, so in container X, there was a dough, which is made up of flour. So dough is made up of flour. And over here, dough is without yeast. And in container Y, dough is placed together with the yeast. So what yeast will do? Yeast will break down the sugars in the dough in anaerobic respiration producing carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide will cause the dough to rise. What yeast does is that yeast first breaks down starch in the dough. Dough contains starch as you all know. So yeast first breaks down starch into uh, glucose and then yeast respires anaerobically on glucose producing carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide causes, causes the dough to rise. Over here there is no yeast. So there is no anaerobic respiration and there is no carbon dioxide being produced. Which substance produced by the yeast, which substance produced by the yeast causes the differences between the containers X and Y? The answer is carbon dioxide. The answer is B. Let's move on to MCQ number 28. Which statement describes the relationships in the ecosystems? Okay. So we have to select the correct statement, which correctly describes the relationship in the ecosystem. Carbohydrates have passed from decomposers to producers. No, carbohydrates have passed from producers to decomposers. So this statement is wrong. When the producers die, for example, when the plant leaf dies, the leaf, the leaf is decomposed by the decomposers. Energy is passed from carnivores to herbivores. No, energy is passed from herbivores to carnivores. Again, this statement is wrong. Proteins are passed from primary consumers to producers. No, proteins are passed from producers to primary consumers. This is the wrong statement as well. Water is passed from respirant decomposers to producers. This is true, guys, because as we all know that when decomposers respire, they produce carbon dioxide and water, and this water can be absorbed by the plants or the producers for photosynthesis. Let's move on to MCQ number 29. The diagram shows the food chain. Which pyramid of numbers matches this food chain? So uh, guys, as you all know, that pyramid of numbers signify the number of the organisms in a food chain. So if we talk about grass, so grass plants will be largest in number because every grass plant is very small. Always remember this tip when and whenever drawing pyramid of numbers, you should know that the bar represents the number. The larger the, the larger the width of the bar, 
the larger the number. And one more tip that you need to know about pyramid of numbers, the smaller the organism, the smaller the organism, the larger the number, the smaller the organism, the larger the number. I'm repeating it again. For pyramid of numbers, you should know the larger, the, the smaller the organism, the smaller the size of the organism, the larger the number. Okay, so the grass plants are smallest in size. So the grass plants will have the largest number. And as you all know that the pyramid of numbers start from the producers. So option C or D could be the answer. If you talk about rabbit, so rabbits will be greater than fox in number. Rabbits are smaller than fox. As I mentioned, smaller the organism, larger the number. So rabbits are smaller than fox. So rabbits will have a larger number than the fox. If you talk about the fleas, these are the flies, right? And these are the flies which feed on uh, the fox. They suck blood from the fox. So as compared to the fox and rabbits, fleas will be larger in number because they are very small in size. Fleas are smaller than fox. They are smaller than rabbits. However, they are larger than grass plants. So fleas will have a number lesser than the grass, but more than rabbits and fox. So the answer will be D. Let's move on to MCQ number 30. In a fish tank, bacteria recycle animal waste for plants to use. Okay. What they're saying that in a fish tank, what happens that whatever waste the fish releases, this waste is recycled by the animals. Sorry. The MCQ says that in a fish tank, whatever waste is released, this is the animal waste and this animal waste is recycled by the bacteria for the plants to use. So what happens when the fish releases the waste? This waste contains nitrogen compounds like urea and the decomposers break down urea releasing ammonium. This ammonium is then converted to nitrites and nitrites is converted to nitrates and these nitrates are absorbed by the plants. So as you all know that whenever decomposition occurs, whenever decomposers decay the dead animals or the dead animal waste, ammonium ions are produced. This process is known as decomposition or ammonification. And as you all know that plants do not take ammonium. They only take nitrates. So ammonium ions are nitrified. There are nitrifying bacteria which cause nitrification. So during nitrification, first ammonium ions are converted to nitrite and then nitrites are further nitrified. There is further nitrification of nitrites to nitrates and nitrates are absorbed by the plant. So what compounds, what are the compounds one, two and three? So guys, one is ammonia. 2 is nitrites and 3 is nitrates. The answer is B. Let's move on to MCQ number 31. Three statements about malarial parasites are listed. Okay, these are the three statements about the malarial parasites. Insecticides are used to kill the vectors. Okay, we need to state that which methods can be used to control malaria. So obviously, if insecticides are used to kill mosquito vectors, then obviously malaria will be controlled. Netting is used to keep the vectors away from the people. Obviously, if we use the nets to keep the vectors away from the people, this will control the malaria. People take drugs that stop the malarial pathogen developing. Malarial pathogen is plasmodium and obviously we take anti-malarial drugs which kill plasmodium and this prevents the people developing malaria. So one, two and three will be the answer. All the statements over here, all the methods over here control malaria. Let's move on to MCQ number 32. This is a very good MCQ, which is an example, which is an example of direct action taken to maintain biodiversity. So guys, what is biodiversity? Biodiversity is the variation in life forms. Variation in life forms. And what is meant by variation in life forms? The diversity or the different lives the different living things that we see 
is the biodiversity. For example, biodiversity include different habitats in an ecosystem. Range of different habitats in an ecosystem. Biodiversity includes number of different species in an in an ecosystem. And biodiversity includes the genetic variation within the same species. Right? So if you need to maintain biodiversity, what direct action will you take? So we need to take one option. Culling elephants in a national park following a huge population increase. So guys, what is meant by this statement? Culling means that we use bullets. We use bullets from the drones to kill the elephants in a national park. National park is an area that is protected by the government. National park is an area or land that is protected by the government and in this area there are a wide range of animals and plants there is a wide range of habitat and this entire land is protected by the government any activities like mining like hunting is banned in the national park so if there's a huge rise in the population of elephants these elephants will cause the extinction of other species why because the elephants will feed elephants are herbivores so they will feed on the plants which can cause extinction of the plant species these elephants can compete with other herbivores and kill them so it's dangerous if the population of elephants increases so if we control the elephant population by culling that is um, using the bullets from the drones to kill the elephants by this method what we will do we will save the other animals that would be harmed by the elephants so this will maintain the biodiversity if we allow the elephant population to increase what will happen the other animals would be destroyed the other plants would be destroyed this would decrease the biodiversity so option a is the right answer it's an example of direct action taken to maintain biodiversity growing fields of plankton to absorb carbon dioxide no um if we absorb if carbon dioxide is absorbed what will happen there will be less carbon dioxide from for the plants and producers this will not maintain the biodiversity this will decrease the biodiversity because the plants would decrease overseeing the birth of a giant panda cub in a zoo if we look at the birth of a giant panda cub there will be no effect on biodiversity researching to discover possible drugs from species found in rain forest so if we are researching to discover possible drugs this does not have any effect on the biodiversity let's move on to mcq number 33 the diagram shows parts of a flower where must pollen land to pollinate the flower so guys pollination is defined as the transfer of pollen from anther to stigma so wh whenever the pollination occurs the the pollen comes from the anther and this anther this pollen lands onto the stigma so pollen is coming from the anther and this pollen lands onto the stigma this is the answer anther and this one is the stigma so the answer will be d because as the mcq says where must the pollen land to pollinate the flower it should land onto the stigma that is d let's move on to mcq number 34 during germination of a seed which structure is first to appear above the soil surface so you guys should know the radical grows into roots so radical does not appear above the soil surface it grows below the soil surface plumule is the first structure which appears above the soil surface whenever the seed germinates because plumule develops into shoots so it will appear above the soil surface let's move on to mcq number 35 the diagram shows a fetus in the uterus where is the concentration of oxygen the highest okay so guys if we talk about the high oxygen concentrations oxygen concentration will be high in the vein at y because as you all know that there's a vein 
which carries the blood which carries the oxygenated blood to the fetus right so oxygen is high at a vein at y y is the umbilical cord and the vein over here is the umbilical vein which carries oxygenated blood to the fetus and over here at x there is an artery which also carries oxygenated blood this is a maternal artery right if we label this one this is the umbilical vein and umbilical vein carries the blood to the fetus and this is this blood is the oxygenated blood over here at the placenta we have maternal arteries which are which are the arteries of the mother so maternal arteries are also oxygen rich because these arteries carry oxygenated blood so if we compare the maternal artery also has a high oxygen and umbilical vein also has a high has a, has a high oxygen both the artery at x and vein at y they both contain contain high oxygen but highest oxygen concentration will be in the maternal artery because the oxygen has to diffuse from the maternal artery into the umbilical vein i hope you get my point oxygen concentration is always highest in the maternal blood and found in the maternal artery so in the maternal artery which contains the maternal blood this blood is oxygenated it has the highest oxygen concentration and from this artery the oxygen will diffuse into the umbilical vein and umbilical vein will also be oxygen rich but oxygen concentration of umbilical vein or vein at y will be lower as compared to the oxygen concentration of an artery at, at x so where is the concentration of oxygen the highest the concentration of oxygen is highest at an artery in, at x which is the maternal artery at the placenta this is the placenta guys okay let's move on to mcq number 36 in 2005 there were an estimated 2.3 million hiv related deaths worldwide in 2011 there were an estimated 1.7 million hiv related deaths worldwide so guys if we compare 2005 and 2011 in 2005 there were 2.3 million hiv related deaths whereas in 2011 there were 1.7 million hiv related deaths it means that the deaths due to hiv have decreased over the past years so if we look from 2005 to 2011 the deaths due to hiv are decreasing what is not a possible cause for this trend okay increase access to the antiretroviral drugs guys antiretroviral drugs are anti hiv drugs so if the person takes anti hiv drugs this will cure the person this will treat the person and this will reduce hiv related deaths but we have to select an we have to select an option which is not a possible cause for this trend so increased access to antiretroviral drugs is a possible cause for this trend because if there is there is an increased access to antiretroviral drugs the deaths due to hiv will decrease obviously increased screening and heat treatment of blood and blood products for transfusion so guys if we um screen the blood and blood products and if we give the heat treat treatment what will happen when we screen we will get to know whether the blood or blood products contain hiv and if we give the heat treatment what will happen if there is any any if there is any hiv it will be destroyed so this is the method which will reduce the hiv deaths and this can be the possible cause for the trend so we cannot select this statement because we need to know a cause that is not a possible cause for this trend increased sharing of needles for intravenous drug use guys if there is an increased if there will be an increased sharing of needles for intravenous drug use there will be increased incidence of hiv hiv will be transmitted more as you all know that hiv is transmitted due, due to sharing of unsterilized needles for intravenous drug use so this is the reason which increases the hiv deaths and this cause is obviously not a possible cause for this trend so the answer is c increased use of condoms for sex guys if more condoms are used if condoms are used for sex 
so the hiv will be prevented hiv transmission will be prevented because as you all know that aids or hiv is a sexually transmitted disease and condom provides a barrier against the transmission of hiv from an infected person to a non infected person mcq number 37 a gene is a unit of inheritance that controls the production of answer is c a protein guys a gene codes for protein or a gene gives instructions to a cell to make a protein so gene controls the production of protein let's move on to mcq number 38 the gene for insulin production can be removed from the human pancreatic cells and added to the genetic material of harmless bacterium guys this is genetic engineering so in genetic engineering to produce human insulin what we do we take out the gene or we cut the gene from the dna in the human pancreatic cells and the gene that we cut or take out is the insulin gene which codes for uh, insulin then we place this gene into a harmless bacterium then what we do we grow these bacteria or these genetically modified bacteria in a fermenter then these bacteria produce insulin we extract insulin and then we purify insulin and give insulin injections to treat the patients with diabetes so what would be the next stage in using this process to treat diabetes so guys uh, once we have added the gene to the harmless bacterium what should be the next stage put the bacterium into a fermenter to multiply rapidly obviously we will we will allow the bacteria to grow in fermenter so that they can grow and multiply and and produce insulin let's move on to mcq number 39 ear lobes can either be attached to the cheek or free unattached this characteristic is controlled by a single gene the allele for attached ear lobes is recessive so guys they say that ear lobes which is the ear lobe is the low, lowest part of the ear and these ear lobes can be attached to the cheek or they can be free or unattached so they are saying that ear lobes that are attached this is a recessive characteristic or we can say that the allele for attached ear lobes is recessive the diagram shows the inheritance of the ear lobe attachment in one family so guys always remember that always remember this point that if a person has attached ear lobes if the person has attached ear lobes this means that the person will have both the recessive alleles do you get my point because the allele for attached ear lobes is recessive and recessive allele only expresses itself when dominant allele is present sorry when dominant allele is absent attached ear lobes is coded by the recessive allele as you all know and recessive allele can only express itself in homozygous conditions or when the dominant allele is absent right so so any one any one whether a male or a female who has attached ear lobes will have both the recessive alleles there will be no dominant allele because recessive allele only expresses itself when dominant allele is absent which two individuals must be heterozygous for the ear lobe attachment so what we can do first of all as we all know that the white box and the white circle represent the individuals with attached ear lobes so obviously these will be homozygous recessive there will be no dominant allele okay now we we need to figure out that which individuals are heterozygous which that means that they have one dominant allele and one recessive allele they have both different alleles that is actually heterozygous so guys if we look at 6 6 is the child of 1 and 2 so 6 has received one small a allele from the parent 2 and one small a allele from the parent 1 so the parents 1 and 2 both have one small a allele and because they have free ear lobes they must have a dominant allele as well right so one and two both are heterozygous why are they heterozygous they should have a dominant allele because they have free ear lobes for free free ear lobes there are dark boxes or dark circles so both the parents have should have a dominant allele for uh the free ear lobes and both the parents should have a small a allele a recessive allele which con- which could which will be passed on to child 6 so that the child 6 contains both the recessive allele okay so it means 1 and 2 are heterozygous guys if you talk about 7 so these are the ch- these are the children 
so for example children 9 has both the recessive alleles so one allele is received from the parent 6 and one allele one small a allele is received from the parent 7 because parent 7 has free air lobes that means parent 7 must have a dominant allele as well and it should also have a recessive allele because it has to pass on the recessive allele to child 9 so 7 is also heterozygous which two individuals must be heterozygous for the air lobe attachment the answer is a 1 and 7 so guys 1 and 7 individuals are heterozygous for the air lobe attachment i hope you get this mcq let's move on to mcq number 40 the table shows the genotypes and phenotypes for hair color for the members of a family but one phenotype is shown incorrectly so guys there are genotypes and there are phenotypes and one of the phenotype is shown incorrectly which family member has the incorrect phenotype let's see guys if one allele is dominant and the other allele is recessive then the hair color is brown okay when both the alleles are dominant the hair color is brown again okay so the mother and the father they both have brown hair okay so if you look at son 1 son 1 has one dominant allele and one recessive allele and has a blonde phenotype whereas the daughter 1 has both recessive alleles and has blonde phenotype this means that the phenotype of son 1 is wrong why because as we get to see from the mother and father that whenever a dominant allele is present the hair color should be brown for the hair color should be for the hair color to be blonde there should be two recessive alleles right and that is true for daughter 1 but son has a dominant allele and a recessive allele so the phenotype of the son 1 should be brown which family member has the incorrect phenotype the answer is son 1 we can see from the option that mother and father they cannot have a wrong phenotype because the options only state daughter and son so it means that the phenotypes of mother and father are correct and according to that son one has a wrong phenotype the son one ha- should have brown hair color and not the blonde hair color we are done with mcq 40 and guys we are done with the paper watch it watch this video kindly subscribe to my youtube channel we are done with this paper i love is everyone